Welcome back. I'm going to have fun with this topic. Have you ever heard someone say, fake it till you make it? Well, let me tell you something. When it comes to human resources, that is the last place someone should be faking it till they make it. You're listening to The Human Resource, and my name is Pandy Pridemore. Okay, I'll just come out and say it. Some of you are going to love me after this show, and some of you may hate me after this show. But daggone it, this needs to be said. And it, it's just become so, so apparent over the last two, three years that there are people out there in the market who say they can do things when they aren't at all prepared or equipped to do it. And when I started in human resources, we were, you know, 40 some years ago, it was, we were administrators. We were reacting. We, we did what we were asked to do. Over the years, we hear more and more about how HR needs to have a seat at the table and HR needs to be more of a strategic player we need to be more involved in the company's direction and the, the, the overall outcome and, and success of the company. Because human resources, as we have talked on the show, could, can, can be as much as 30% of the budget for a company. Human resource costs, oh, everything involved. That's huge. That's enormous. And when I start looking at examples over and over and over again where individuals in that role of human resources are not equipped to lead or make decisions or... or okay, so you can tell I'm a little emotional about this one. So here's the deal. I, I just want to talk about the five reasons why if you are not properly trained in human resources. You need to understand what you are doing to your employer and the impact you can have on the company. Human resources is not viewed like finances. In fact, even marketing, the marketing department, the marketing budget tends to be a little bit more important than human resources. And, and we get that. Those of us who have been around forever, we, we, we get that and we, we're over it. We, we know that we're important, but here's the deal. Right now in this market, people think and they're telling potential employers that they can be HR representatives or HR generalists. I love that term, HR generalists, when in fact they don't have nearly the skill sets or the competencies that they should have to lead that company in that area. So here's the first consequence. Someone who who comes into a company who does not understand the impact of bad decisions within human resources is quite frankly totally incapable of guiding decisions made from an HR perspective. So let's talk about somebody who's been a great recruiter. They, they know talent management like the back of their hand. We put them in an HR generalist position and now all of a sudden we're going to them and we're asking them for guidance and advice on a termination or we're going to them with asking advice and guidance on um, someone who might possibly need to be on FMLA. If that individual is not properly trained on those topics or in having the experience properly trained to deal with those circumstances, they cannot guide your management team or guide the leadership on the most compliant and safe way to handle either one of those concerns. HR professionals should be equipped to be that person to partner with. You've heard it said a, a number of times on this show, go and partner. Teach your supervisors and your team leads to partner with HR. Have the senior team come and partner with HR to run ideas and run scenarios. If you've got the wrong person in the wrong position, if they're faking it till they make it, 
you're going to get bit on that. So guiding decisions is not going to be something you should be asking that person to do. Second of all, creating policy. You know, it never fails. When you go into an HR role, even if you're not a true HR person, they're going to come to you and say, well, what should we be doing about PTO? Or what do you think we should be doing about the performance review? Is, is this a compliant performance review? Does this like look like one we should be doing? If they don't have the experience or they don't have a mentor or a consultant or a labor law attorney to turn to, is that policy truly going to be the best representation for your company? Are they going to know what can go into that policy and what can't? Remember, when you're setting policies, especially in your handbook, you know, I cannot tell you how many times I'll talk to an office manager and she'll say, oh, I, I already re rewrote the handbook. And I'll say, oh, okay. And on what basis did you, well, I, I just pulled everything from the internet or I used a policy handbook that I had with my previous employer and oh, I'm, we're, we're good. When in fact, she has no clue whether she's good or not other than her own perception. A properly trained HR person will either know that the languages are changing, will know that the laws are changing, or have someone in their back pocket to go ask. Be very careful asking the wrong person to set policy for you. Because if you terminate, if you do a corrective action, if you deny someone an accommodation, if you do not recognize retaliation or harassment in your workplace, because your HR person is not properly trained, the consequences are enormous. So what's number three? Someone who's not properly trained in HR cannot train others. You know, that's, someone asked me this morning, they said, well, really, what, what's your sweet spot? What do you think your strengths are? And it was really easy. I, I absolutely love sharing my information. I love taking everything that I've learned over the last 40 years and, and throw it into somebody else's lap easily and softly and, and appropriately so that they can learn from me and they can start applying the foundation of knowledge to what the culture of their company is or to the needs of their management team. If you don't have a properly trained individual, if, if your HR representative or the person acting in your HR role is not staying educated, and I mean educated by genuine experts, labor law attorneys, um, professional mediators and arbitrators, um, organizations like uh, the Society of Human Resources, um, consultants, consultants, you are missing. They are missing and they cannot equip. Remember, I call them the boots on the ground, the people who truly are making 90% of your HR decisions, those supervisors and team leads. They can't equip them. And therefore, there's no foundation at all for training. Then what about leadership? Someone who's not properly trained, and remember, I'm not talking about uh, a master's degree in human resources. I'm not talking about the SPHR. I'm talking about somebody who understands the fundamentals and who is working on gaining that knowledge that can be applied every single day. And it takes years to become a true expert, but if you're not understanding the realism of day-to-day -day HR, how can you help set a strategy for three years from now or five years from now and help the company understand where the gaps are or what our challenges are going to be when we move from 49 employees to 52 or what we're going to need to do if we start taking federal contracts? What, what is the company going to need to do from a health you know, employee benefit perspective if we move from 50 employees to 100? Leading by example, leading in a strategic manner, you got to make sure you've got the right person in that HR role if you're going to expect them to be a major part of that aspect of your business. And then the very biggest reason, and this is the one that I just, I've mentioned over and over again, 
It's the fact that they're putting your company at risk. They're becoming a liability versus an asset. This whole concept of, well, just fake it until you make it, is absolutely putting dynamite in that HR office. And I cannot emphasize enough, before you slide somebody in that HR role, please either do an HR assessment with them so that you know where their strengths and weaknesses are. That's what my company does. We actually go and we have, it's a 15 minute quiz actually, and it goes over all the federal laws, which then we kind of touch a little bit on state law based on where they're at. But we have an idea. Are they stronger on uh, wage and hour issues or are they completely null and void of the EEOC laws? Um, how are they from an employee relations aspect? It's, it's so deep that, but yeah, 15 minutes, it makes a very clear picture of what kind of training that individual needs. What do we need to equip them so that once they're successful, the company's successful. I know this is hard for some of you to stomach because maybe you haven't been properly trained. I talked to a young lady um, the other day who, uh, the company that I was uh, talking to said, oh, well, we're going to have her start and she's going to start overseeing the human resource role. And I went, oh, okay, she's going to supervise the HR person. And they said, yes. I said, well, what is her background? Oh, well, she's been in charge of our customer service. It's a company of over 125 people. Customer service is very vital to what they do. How does that relate to human resources? Oh, because she's great taking care of people. She's got a sense of urgency. She's, she's going to be absolutely perfect for HR. So when I met her, I asked her, so how have you been, you know, what, what's your HR exposure? And how have you built your knowledge? And with enthusiasm, she said, oh, gosh, I've done everything from terminations to corrective actions. I did all the interviewing. It was a two-man office. And if I had a real problem, I would call corporate. But for the most part, they just let us do what we needed to do. Me, as, as my mind works, what I heard her say was, I have no clue what I'm doing. I just shoot from the hip and no one's caught me yet. That's a person I'm going to spend some serious time with. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do everything I possibly can to build her up so that she can be successful overseeing HR for that company. There's no special um, skill set or some special um, sense of intelligence that you have to be or ha possess to be in HR. We're just normal people. But for crying out loud, don't, don't put a square peg in a round hole. Not until we've rubbed off the edges of that square and made it fit properly. If you need training, ask for it. It's okay to ask for help. And if you're a business owner and I've stirred you a little bit, go back to your HR person and ask her, how comfortable are you with these topics? And when was the last time you actually got some training? Because training the trainer is not a bad thing. Don't fake it till you make it. Not on my watch and not in human resources. Okay, guys, you know who I am. Hopefully you'll come to the next podcast. You've been listening to the human resource. Take care.